streaming so hopefully you guys uh can hear us you're probably hearing me screaming uh, this one is a nail biter guys on valley boulevard coming up to garfield this is the lapd's on the back division that is in pursuit of a stolen car it's a, a silver hyundai man this has been scary this guy is running like uh oh gosh he is uh extremely crazy here 80 miles an hour plus we've seen on surface streets. Lots of close calls. I think he might have hit a car at one point. Uh, barely missed hitting that after only because they're trying to get this guy. They're trying to get this guy to calm down, thinking that if they pull the units off that maybe he'll start to drive a little more normally. But th it's not working, folks. He's still as crazy as ever. And maybe getting on the freeway here. Looks like he's going to be getting onto the... Let's see. I want to get the direction here real quick. I'm waiting till he joins the freeway. Looks like he's gonna go eastbound 10. So he was, uh, he had a couple options there, so I wanted to confirm before I said anything, but looks like eastbound 10 from Garfield in Alhambra. So he's uh, blacked out. I think he's just got his running lights on. Eastbound 10 at New Avenue. Again, if you're just joining us, this is the LAPD's Holland Beck Division that is in pursuit of a possible stolen Hyundai. Silver in color. It does have some uh, damage now to the car because uh, there's been a lot of close calls and I think at points he has actually collided with at least uh, one other vehicle that we were able to notice because he was running stop signs, running red lights, wrong side of the road, fast speeds, really scary stuff. And now he's all over the road here on the 10 freeway. The good thing is there isn't too much traffic, but the traffic that there is, he's just weaving in and out of here. He's been on the 10 freeway, now entering Rosemead. Just threading the needle, needle here, folks. Uh, high speeds, you see them there, over 100 miles an hour. Wow. I'm hearing that the LAPD is gonna cancel the pursuit because it's just too dangerous, that's obvious. Uh, they're trying to see though if maybe the CHP could pick it up since it's on the freeway. But what a danger to other commuters here on the freeway. And once again, this is the eastbound 10 freeway coming through Rosemead. So if you know anyone that normally travels this freeway at this time, give them the heads up. Hopefully they can exit and uh, let this pursuit go by before uh, they rejoin the freeway because this guy is in danger. He's coming right up to your tail, blacked out, 100 miles an hour. It's extremely dangerous. and. Uh, at this point, no one behind him, so there's really no reason for him to be driving this way, but yeah, he continues to do so with just the airship overhead, but even he turned his lights off, so he's not even lighting the vehicle, so this guy doesn't know he's being pursued, and he's still driving this way. Continuing here, eastbound on the 10 freeway. Yeah, thank you to my friend Sandra who is pointing out no headlights on this guy. So that really makes it difficult to see. A CHP is coming. My pilot Jim is hearing that. So that's what we were waiting to hear to see if California Highway Patrol would take over this pursuit. They're going to uh, move it over to the yellow frequency for those of you who have a scanner and want to tune in with us. So the yellow frequency here on a uh, yellow frequency here on uh, the CHP scanner. CHP, that's going to be the yellow is uh, going to be the East LA frequency. So I'm uh, using one hand to run the camera here, using the other to change the scanner so I can get it on the East LA frequency here of the California. Uh, say that again. Oh, perfect, thank you. Okay, back with you guys here. We continue here eastbound on the 10 freeway. Airships overhead from the California Highway Patrol.
This guy is still all over the road. We're at Garvey Avenue here on the eastbound turn freeway. So no ground units on him, just the airship. Continuing uh, eastbound on the 10 freeway. We're in El Monte now, so next freeway coming up is gonna be the 605. When we first uh, found out about this vehicle, it was in East LA. It was uh, not far from the Commerce train yard, actually, just a little north of there. And the sheriff ship was trying to get units behind it, but uh, he couldn't get uh, any units behind it. So uh, they actually let it go at that point, but it eventually, the LAPD's Hollenbeck Division spotted the vehicle as well, and then they started pursuing. And now those units are off of it, and now uh, they're trying to get the CHP behind it. But we still have the airship overhead, continuing to monitor this guy, even though uh, there are no units now behind this vehicle, just uh, because uh, it's so it's just so dangerous. Then they may be switching frequencies here to the orange here in a moment, since we're uh, getting closer to the Baldwin Park area. So LAPD Air 16 is overhead. Continuing eastbound here on the 10 freeway, coming up to Francisquito. For those of you who have a scanner and want to follow along, it's uh, now on the orange CHP Baldwin Park frequency. Oh, there's a CHP unit right behind him. Let's see what he does. He just flew by him at 100 miles an hour. He has to get behind him. So I'm hearing the unit that's directly behind him. He's on the scanner right now. So he says he's behind the, the vehicle now. They're approaching Puente. A hundred miles an hour. Wow. I don't know specifically what type of Hyundai vehicle it is, but uh, silver in color. And the CHP unit is going to be lighting him up here very soon is what we're hearing. So we'll see his lights turn on here in just a moment. Coming up to West Covina Parkway here on the eastbound 10 freeway. About 80 miles an hour. He's using every lane of this eastbound 10 freeway, and there are the lights. That's what we were waiting for. There you go. He is finally lit up. I highly doubt that's going to do anything, because he was, uh, he had units uh, behind him uh, with their code 3 lights on when this pursuit first began, and uh, that didn't stop him, so I doubt it's going to stop him now. It might only embolden him even more. I want to say he has his hazards on. Whoa, look at that. He pretended he was going to exit at Vincent Avenue, but it is now back on the eastbound turn freeway. Unclear how many uh, people may be in this car. I should have mentioned that it, uh, uh, across the scanner. They're just saying it's a he, so they believe it's a, it's a male driver. But uh, whether there's more than one person in the vehicle, that's unclear at this point. And look at these speeds, guys. Triple digits, blacked out. This is uh, as dangerous as it gets. At least he's on the freeway, though. It could be worse. Could be on surface streets. Through Azusa here, he's front end freeway. Going all the way to the right. Let's see what he does. Well, he's, just, he's just gonna go all the way to the left. So he's just zigzagging across the freeway right now. Oh, hard on the brakes here. Yeah, he's got a little bit of traffic here. Citrus is the next exit. You can see some damage to the car because he hasn't been involved in, in some collisions at least. It's like a family tree. In West Covina now, 
at Barranca Street on the East Mountain. So we first heard about this. Uh, we were actually uh, up getting some video of some other things going on around town tonight. And uh, we heard what this was a following. It was very close by, so we uh, approached just to see if it would go pursuit, and it went pursuit as soon as we got on it. So we've been overhead essentially the entire time that this has been a pursuit. Started with the LAPD, Hollybeck's division, uh, near the uh, city terrace area. So it's kind of near Cal State LA. Uh, and then it, uh, uh, it was all over the place. Oh gosh, uh, so many close calls. Uh, on surface streets as well as on the freeway, but you, you see all these CHP units kind of getting in position. Uh, so that's going to be the secondary unit of the pursuit that's going to get behind uh, the primary that we see there, the SUV. Heading over to the Kellogg Hill area. So in terms of pursuit intervention tactics, a pit maneuvers out of the question. He's going way too fast. The freeway's just way too busy. Uh, they could try spike strips, but that's going to be really tough because he's literally using every lane. So they would pretty much have to guess which lane he's going to be in. So it's going to be really difficult to do. And uh, the speeds, they're just way too high. So at this point, their best bet is just to try to just get him to surrender. The way he's driving this car, I mean, who knows how long it's going to last on him. And who knows how much gas he had when all of this began. But approaching the Kellogg Hill area here on the East Mountain. Yeah, that's a good point, Jack. So Jack Noyes at the assignment desk, just making a good point there uh, that I want to share with you guys. So they had gone into tracking mode. Police had gone into tracking mode because he was driving so recklessly. They thought if he doesn't see us behind him, maybe he'll slow down. Obviously that didn't work. So now the units are behind him again because it doesn't matter whether they are there or not. This guy's gonna continue to drive like a madman. Uh, over 100 miles an hour here uh, on the East Mountain Freeway. I am hearing now the talk about spike strips, so at least that's coming into the conversation, but maybe exiting here onto the 57 Freeway. Let's see if he does north or south 57. Looks like south 57, so southbound 57 Freeway from the 10th Freeway. A southbound 57, so the 57 Freeway, the Orange Freeway, that's gonna dead end at the Orange Crush in the city of Orange. But let's see if he gets that far. I'm be winding out the shot right now because we can count how many units are behind him. I'm just seeing two. It's tough to keep up with this guy. I mean, he's, he's driving so fast. Kudos to my pilot, James Pollard, who's uh, keeping us uh, on this because this guy's moving fast. That temple, light traffic conditions, but still using every lane. I'm hearing that the CHP helicopter just got overhead, so he's gonna call it now. Up until now, it had been the LAPD airship, uh, but that's uh, way outside his jurisdiction now because uh, we're all the way at the 10 and the 57 now. So it's going to be a CHP now. We're heading towards Diamond Bar on the southbound side of the 57. Light traffic conditions. I'm just looking up ahead over towards the, the Brea Pass. And uh, as far as I can see, uh, traffic conditions are going to be light for him. And I have a low light camera, which means I'm able to see things even in dark conditions, but this guy being blacked out uh, makes it tough to see. He's approaching the 60. Yeah, he may be uh, getting on, committed to the 60 freeway here. This is where they come together, so let's see what he does. Yeah, I want to say he 
Gonna be transitioning here to the 60. Just on the other side of the carpool there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it looks like he's in. Yep, westbound 60. Westbound 60 from the 57. Sixty freeway through Brea Canyon. We're in Diamond Bar, folks. Wow, look at these speeds, guys. That's, that's incredible. All over the freeway, Dash. If you're just joining us, this was originally the LAPD's Holland Brick Division that was in pursuit of what they believe to be a stolen car, a silver Hyundai. The pursuit uh, essentially then went into surveillance mode, which was helicopter only because of the dangerous driving conditions that you see here. And then eventually, Hollenbeck let it go. The CHP took over because it had made its way onto the freeway. It had made its way onto the freeway. And so now it is the California Highway Patrol that is in pursuit behind this guy, as well as uh, in the air. Pardon me here. Uh, they're actually switching frequencies on us. They're moving over to the blue. If you've got a scanner, I mean, if you're following along with us on the scanner, CHP blue frequency is what they're switching to now. As uh, he continues here westbound on the 60 freeway, coming into Roland Heights. City of industry now. Uh, Jim is checking right now. One hour, Jim. Yeah, well, one hour. Okay. City of Industry here. It looks like you might have hit the side of the freeway there, but regain control. Continuing westbound here, 60 Hacienda Heights. Triple digit speed. This guy has been pushing this car with every ounce it's got since his pursuit began. We first picked it up in um, kind of near Cal State, LA, uh, kind of near. Uh, uh, the city terrace area. He was on surface streets. He was actually on Soto. Uh, he was on Soto near the 10 freeway. Uh, Soto near Marengo is where they actually initiated the uh, traffic stop for the pursuit. It was the LAPD's homicide division. Uh, but he quickly took off. Uh, he made uh, no attempt to stop whatsoever, not even to pretend to stop. And he just took off. And it's been a fast moving, dangerous chase ever since. Uh, when he was on surface streets, he was running stop signs, running red lights. So it's actually a good thing that he's on the freeway because at least it takes that cross traffic situation out of it, as well as the possibility of pedestrians. But even then, it is so dangerous on the freeway here. Uh, he's coming up to a little bit of traffic here. Splitting there between cars. CHP still behind him. Uh, let's see how many units now. Okay, so I still see just two units of the California Highway Patrol that are behind this guy, as well as the CHP airship overhead at 100 miles plus. Tap 
tapping the brakes. Let me widen out to see why. Eh, not really see anything. Oh, I'm trying to dodge that Tesla. So 60 freeway. Gonna be coming up to 605. Ah, uh, Santa Heights. And I don't think those are his hazards that are on. I think he just has his blinker on. Ah, uh, yes, Jack, CHP. We've got two ground units behind him, we've got a CHP helicopter overhead. We're now 60 westbound on Crossroads Parkway, so that's 6605, not far from Rose Hill Cemetery, we're just on the north side of it. So what can they do to get this guy to stop? Well, they're not gonna pit him, that's for sure. He's going way too fast. Uh, they could use spike strips though, uh, that's an option. But they would have to guess where he's going at this point. Who knows, he's pretty much all over the place. Using every lane, so it's really hard to guess what lane he's gonna be in to try to successfully deploy a set of spike strips. So all they could do is just continue to follow him, try to get him to stop, only hopefully he runs out of gas. Hopefully he doesn't crash, and, but uh, the way he's been driving, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how things end. There's no talk of him being uh, under the influence in any way. Uh, simply came back as a stolen, came back as a stolen car, but uh, he refused to pull over and the pursuit was on. It's unclear when the car was stolen and under what circumstances, but it was uh, the LAP. LAPD Taliban Division that initially started the pursuit, they uh, surrendered it to the California Highway Patrol since they are the police of our freeways here in uh, California. And uh, they've been overhead and behind it ever since. So this has been a pursuit that's been going on now for uh, quite some time. I put it at at least 30 minutes at this point. Bring the funk back. at Rosemary Boulevard. So we're kind of headed back in the direction that we came. And I know they're talking about spike strips. There's a unit with a spike strip. They're gonna try to... Coming on over, whether you like it or not. Very dangerous, of course. If you know who might be on the roads in this particular area on this Friday night, please let them know. We know from covering these pursuits that if you do find yourself in a situation like that, don't try to be a hero and pull off to the side instead. It, it makes me think um, with these speeds here how desperate this driver is to try to get away from law enforcement. You have to wonder if they get off the freeway at any point in time or how much gas is in that car. Again, it's a stolen vehicle. We don't know if there are other people on board, but we believe there is one person, uh, the driver, uh, I'm wondering, though, is this person looking for an area that is comfortable, familiar territory, being this started with the LAPD's Hollenbeck Division, or are they going to just keep on going westbound on the 60 till they have to make a, a freeway change? When we, when we talk about how to bring these things to an end, certainly just given the speeds, it's extremely dangerous. So spike strips uh, likely out of the question. Pit maneuver obviously way too fast for that. Uh, but it, it looks like the lights are off though now, right? Does it look like the yeah, lights are off? Yeah. Yep. So we just, oh my goodness, it's weaving in and mm -hmm. out of traffic with the lights off. I don't, that must be a chosen strategy for some reason because the lights were on not long ago, if I'm not mistaken. We have the whoa, night sun, whoa, oh my whoa. goodness. Wow, this person, uh, this could end badly for this driver and other motorists. Uh.
Uh, sometimes when it's this dangerous, law enforcement will pull back, keeping that helicopter overhead so that suspect knows that they are still being followed. But you have those police cars actually pull back, perhaps giving that driver just a little bit of a break from the tension of it all, hoping they will kind of bring this to an end. Again, right there, lights off can be so scary. Marla, as you noted, though, for those drivers there, I mean, if, if it's hard enough alone to have a car coming up on you at these speeds. But with lights off, even worse. Speaking of, I mean, you just made me think of maybe they turn the lights off thinking that they, the, the chopper above with the lights on would have a hard time keeping an eye. On. Okay. Or or bring the braking. The braking because it's stuck there. There you go. So uh, it looks to be a silver four-door. Oh, we're seeing, oh, look at this. We're seeing CHP finally for the first time here coming up strongly with those lights on. So now, obviously, CHP knows what they're dealing with as uh, they gain a little bit of ground on this Grand Theft Auto suspect. But nonetheless, talk about a dangerous situation. Absolutely. Uh, dangerous, too, for the officer as well, having to also weave in and out of those different at those very high speeds as well. Uh, again, this driver, stolen vehicle on the 60 freeway, no sign of exiting. So we've been on this pursuit, is going at these high rates of speed continuously throughout the time we've been following this. You can see the flashing lights sort of in, in, in the, the bottom of your screen. That's from the CHP. Obviously, if we had a wider shot, we might be able to see more black and whites. But again, CHP is now the lead agency on this Grand Theft Auto suspect. Stolen vehicle pursuit, San Gabriel Valley. Well, now we're 60 westbound. This is all according to our extreme nav technology here. Uh, going past Downey Road in the South Gate, East LA area. Speeds, since we've been on, Christine, have been well above 100 miles per hour mm -hmm. throughout the entire stretch. A lot of options for this drive. Comes to freeways coming up on the 710 freeway, going 60 bound here. A lot of different freeway options if you keep this trajectory, this direction here. But again, not a single song thinking about exiting a freeway at all. Um, again, with LAPD Hollenbeck guessing this started on surf. Driver staying here on the freeway though. And we see now a clear view with the uh, with the cruiser there, the CHP cruiser, and the idea of how do you bring this to an end, right? Because we talk. Oh, okay, exit. Is the exit in here? Exiting. Ooh, Exiting very dangerous. little bumpy there, yep. I'm gonna pull off. Okay, B Boyle Heights now. This started in El area, which is the Boyle Heights area. Oh, looks to me this driver coming back to an area familiar to that driver. So we're back now in LAPD's Hollenbeck territory. CHP, though, on this pursuit, they know the freeway is very interesting to see if LAPD goes back to pick this up. Well, and, and, you know, we often uh, talk about how l l many agencies strategize and they help one another out. So good point. LAPD could uh, play a part in this again. CHP, I know they're all coordinating. They're coordinating with the airship above that Night Sun is uh, integral to getting the suspect, uh, to keeping track of the suspect. And now, fortunately, I was concerned with the, the, the traffic on surface streets, but it's pretty light. So the speed... Ooh, coming to a close, close call there in that intersection. That was uh, South Lorena Street and East A Street in the Boyle Heights area. Making a turn here, Christine. So we have seen this driver blow through at least four red lights. It's reminding you of how dangerous this pursuit has been off the freeway as well as on the freeway. Are they going to bail? Mm. Are they going to try to bail in a neighborhood that's familiar to them? Also, can LAPD get a read? Might they know their trajectory, their direction, maybe a, f a home that's familiar to this driver? They can maybe get a spike strip out there, mm -hmm. going a little bit slower here, a lot slower on these surface streets, still dangerous. You see it? it Parking, is that right, or is that just the reflection of the light? Hard to tell. Might be just a reflection of the back lights Hard there. to tell. Um, lights are on, though, which is, you know, good, of course. We're getting word that this is a silver Hyundai. Make and model looks to be that four-door sedan, silver Hyundai. And coming up on this intersection here, choosing to make a right turn. And, you know, I think you make the best point, Christine, about they know this area. Mm -hmm. So, again, this started in the Boyle Heights area, went on the freeway, the driver...
turned back and came back to the Boyle Heights area. We heard there might be a gang tie here with this driver. So wondering, is this driver looking for a place to ditch the car, looking for a place to connect family, looking to just bring this to an end in an area where they actually know the streets. Ooh, look at the speeds here still in this residential area. And you have to wonder, is there going to be somebody? Oh, wait, are we blocked in? Blocked in here? Yep. Up Going on, on the sidewalk? Yep. No, where can go. this car go? They're going to run. They're going to run. There we go. So we got the driver. It doesn't seem to have a passenger as those officers are chasing down the suspect with a night sign. It looks like it's all time because it seems to be slowing down. There's nowhere to go. He's turning. Still on the run there. All right. If you see these lights overhead in the Boyle Heights area, keep your doors locked. Uh, police here searching for a suspect who's led them on a very dangerous pursuit. Uh, looks like the light's staying in a certain area. Perhaps is that suspect in custody? It looks like the night sign is staying right there. So I'm, I'm hoping that they have this guy in custody. I think there's other ground units, other uh, officers who are making their way under the tree. It's just that tree is blocking us, so it's hard to see. But it doesn't look to be as frenetic as, as it was just moments ago. Unless that suspect has run into a location, uh, that officer does not seem to be overly concerned. The way the stance of the officers looks like they are feeling comfortable about what's going on there. Oh, and you see there's a woman there, too. I don't know if she happens to live in this complex. Just right so you see the uh -huh. woman on the top of your screen uh -huh. maybe she just happens to uh to live there but it looks like given their demeanor right that it, it, it seems to be a calmer demeanor yeah yeah it does not seem to be a demeanor of concern uh is that night sun no overhead from the helicopter hard to tell there we go oh, there we all go. right suspect okay. in custody got it okay okay well that's how this one ends here in boyle heights like we talked about this suspect started in came back to boyle heights after being on the freeway It's like a family tree, part of you and part of me, and if we should separate, go your own way, I won't wait. Bring the funk back. Bring the funk back. back.